This video is going to look at the theoretical understanding behind privatisation. Privatisation is when state-run organisations, government-run organisations, or state-run activity is sold off to the private sector. The idea being that when the private sector is in charge of these organisations, they're going to run these organisations much more efficiently because they're going to have a profit motive. At the same time, there is going to be more competition that's now allowed to occur in the market that's bringing down costs and, again, increasing efficiency. So the idea behind privatisation is to see greater efficiency gains through more competition and through this profit motive. What I've done here is I've given you uh, a basic essay guide of how to answer any theoretical question on privatisation. Chances are you might get a question in your exam which needs to be slightly more applied than this. But a lot of these points will still uh, be valid in your essay. You just have to actually apply them to whatever market you need to analyse. So, you would start by um, showing this diagram. The intentions of privatisation is to make markets more competitive, to make markets more efficient. So, the intentions are very simple, to move to more competitive outcomes. So, you can draw this deadweight loss diagram, uh, but analyse it where instead of uh, moving away from competitive outcomes, we're actually moving towards them. So prices or quantities move towards the competitive levels of output and the competitive price levels as well, where P equals MC in theory. So you can say that as a result there are going to be consumer surplus gains by doing so. So that diagram is very useful to show the movement towards competitive outcomes in whatever industry you're trying to analyse. So, let's look at the advantages, the disadvantages, and then the depends on points for privatisation. So, Privatisation is good because it's likely to lead to an increase in allocative efficiency. With more competition, a greater drive for efficiency, you can imagine firms are going to strive to produce goods and services that consumers want, and to produce goods and services at a very high quality, which is great for consumers. Consumer satisfaction is going to be maximised. Thus, allocative efficiency is likely to increase. There will be a reduction in exit efficiency, a reduction in waste, as firms will need to drive down costs to remain competitive now, to maximise profits. And at the same time, people argue <clears throat> that because of this, uh, uh, because of privatisation, because of this profit motive, there is going to be a great incentive for firms to be as efficient as possible. And in doing so, it might lead to dynamic efficiency gains, which occur over time. For firms to actually gain an advantage, for firms that operate in highly competitive markets, um, to gain advantage, they might need to invest over time and be dynamically efficient, which is great, again, for consumers. Uh, it will lead to lower prices over time, hopefully. So that's another benefit of a profit motive um, of increased competition. So all of those major advantages there um, as a result of greater competition and, uh, and greater striving for efficiency. But there are some problems here. We're making an assumption, aren't we, that as soon as the government privatises an industry, that there is going to be a flocking of firms to actually enter the industry. A reduction in barriers, yes, but is there really going to be competition straight away? There might be limited competition, in which case there could well be productive inefficiency. There might be allocative inefficiency, productive, productive inefficiency in that um, firms are not going to be operating at the minimum point on the average cost. Curve. They don't need to if there is limited competition. They don't need to drive down their costs as much as, uh, as necessary if competition is limited. And there might be allocative inefficiency too. If there is limited competition, why do firms need to uh, strive to hit the highest quality? They don't. So there might be allocative inefficiency as well. So the level of competition is very important. There is no guarantee that competition will be high. There is no guarantee that firms will now flock to enter this industry. No guarantee. At the same time, with privatisation, because of this profit motive, Firms that operate are not going to want to run loss-making services. Um, they're, not wanna, they're not going to want to provide loss-making goods, even though they might be socially desirable goods and services. If they don't make a profit, firms aren't going to provide, provide them. And that's a big problem, because consumers want them. And at the same time, if beforehand there was a state-run natural monopoly, and that natural monopoly was benefiting from huge economies of scale, then by opening up the market to more competition, by privatising it, you're going to lose those huge economies of scale benefits, which could again lead to productive inefficiency now, um, as average costs can't be minimised, because you're actually allowing more firms to enter the market, which means each individual firm can't produce as much, and therefore won't be able to exploit all potential economies of scale. 
So the loss of natural monopoly is a big issue here, uh, if it applies in whatever industry you're looking at. And overall, whether privatisation is going to be successful depends on a few key points. The level of competition, post-privatisation as we've talked about, the greater the level of competition, the more effective it will be. It depends also on the level of government regulation. So one of the key risks here is that there is limited competition, you might see local monopolies, you might see um, oligopolies that exist. So if government regulation is tight, if it's strong, chances are you're going to see more competitive outcomes. Whereas if government regulation isn't so strong, it isn't weak, you might see um, the existence of monopolies and oligopolies post-privatisation. Government can also regulate in terms of um, whether firms are forced to provide uh, services and goods which are socially desirable. That might reduce number two. And government regulation might also be strict in terms of <coughs> firms having to take into account external costs. So one of the key disadvantages here also is that when private firms actually go for profit motives and try and make the most profit as possible, they ignore external costs and external benefits. So if there are negative externalities or positive externalities, private firms will not take them into account as they follow their own self-interest. But if government regulation is high and tight, they might force firms to take them into account, maybe by imposing taxation, maybe by you know, regulating very severely or whatever it might be. So these are two depends on points in terms of success. You might also want to consider, well, what is success? Are we looking at whether consumers benefit? Are we looking at whether firms benefit? Are we looking at whether governments succeed? How do we define success with privatisation? That's another way you can evaluate uh, in an essay like this. I hope that helps with privatisation. Remember, that's a theory. You'll need to apply it to a given case study, whatever comes up in your exam. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.